so there are five sodium bicarbonate co-transporters in mammals. Uh, and for retinal people, may be interested to know that uh, mice defective in MBCN1 or in MBC2 uh, exhibit a progressive retinal degeneration that leads to blindness. But uh, what I'm going to focus on today is uh, the founder member of this group, which is MBCE1. MBCE1 was first described in the kidney, uh, where it's resident in the base lateral membrane of proximal tubule cells. And the role of the protein there is that it reclaims uh, bicarbonate from the glomerular filtrate and tops up blood bicarbonate, which is under constant challenge from uh, acidic, uh, acid diet and from the metabolic acid load. Uh, and indeed, defects in the MBC1 protein uh, are associated with proximal renal tubular acidosis, that is a, a catastrophic drop in blood pH, uh, which is associated with growth retardation, mental retardation, and uh, of specific interest today, uh, PRTA is associated with certain ocular defects. Uh, and there are three of these. Uh, the first is band keratopathy, uh, which is a, a buildup of calcium salts in the front part of the cornea. The second is glaucoma, elevated intraocular pressure. The third is cataracts, or clouding of the lens. Uh, and observed in mouse models, but not actually in uh, human patients, is corneal edema i.e. a swelling of the, the corneal uh, stroma, uh, which uh, causes a clouding of the cornea. So uh, thanks to the work of uh, Joe Banana, we know quite a lot about the role of MBC1 in the cornea. Uh, we know that it's expressed in the base lateral membrane, and it forms uh, part of the so-called bicarbonate pump, uh, which is uh, involved in constantly reclaiming solutes and water from the corneal stroma, preventing it from swelling and distending the uh, transparent ordered array of collagen uh, in the matrix. Uh, so it makes some sense that uh, mice that lack MBC1 exhibit this corneal swelling. And uh, it also makes some sense in terms of the band keratopathy, uh, because if you imagine that MBC1 is constantly reclaiming bicarbonate from the matrix, and um, then you can also imagine that bicarbonate could be trapped in the matrix if you lose MBC1 and that could cause a, a rise of pH in the matrix, a uh, buildup of carbonates, and then precipitation of calcium carbonates. At least that's the, the working hypothesis at the moment. Uh, but uh, outside of the cornea, this doesn't really explain the, what's going on in the lens or what's going on with glaucoma. So, um, of course, there's been much work uh, to identify locations of MBC1 expression elsewhere in the eye. So apart from the corneal endothelium and uh, keratocytes, it's also in conjunctiva, uh, in the ciliary body that secretes aqueous humor, in the trabecular meshwork that drains aqueous humor, uh, and also in the anterior lens epithelium that provides nutrients for the uh, lens fiber cells. Uh, it's also expressed uh, in the retinal pigment epithelial layer, but I'm not going to talk about that uh, today. Um, so apart from the actual distribution of MBC1 through the eye, very little is known about its role outside of the cornea. Uh, and an interesting uh, observation that uh, hadn't really been realized until all the, uh, the uh, medical papers had been kind of synthesized together is that not all individuals with MBC1 mutations exhibit all three of these uh, uh, eye defects. So let's take a look at these mutations. This is the MBC1 molecule represented as a polypeptide string that's threaded through the membrane multiple times. Uh, and what we need to know is that there are two variants of MBC1 expressed in the same gene that are expressed in the eye. So there's the A variant, that's the one that's in the kidney as well. That has a short end terminus and there's a B variant that has a longer end terminus. Uh, and that becomes relevant when we look at the 12 mutations that have been described in MBC1. And we'll note that one of these mutations specifically uh, affects MBCE1A and not MBCE1B. So of these 12 mutations, eight are associated with all three of these eye defects. Uh, yet there's, uh, this mutation here is uh, associated specifically with glaucoma. There are two mutations that cluster in the third transmembrane helix that are associated with everything except glaucoma. And there's a fourth mutation out uh, towards the C-terminus of the protein that's associated with everything except band keratopathy. Uh, so the question I was interested in asking is what can we learn from these genotype-phenotype correlations about the role of MBC1 in the eye, uh, both in health and disease states? So these are the correlations uh, just tabulated out here with the actual uh, names of the mutations. 
Uh, so we're going to be looking at the T4A5S, the I81C, and the A799V uh, as an example of one of the eight that causes all three of the uh, ocular pathologies. And there are four possible causes that one could imagine uh, of these uh, pathologies. They could be secondary to the whole body acidosis. They could watch one of these uh, ocular defects could be secondary to another of the ocular defects. They could be caused by MBC1 mutant misfolding, which could cause cellular apoptosis in key cell layers. Or it could be due to loss of a physiological function of MBC1. Um, we can discount the first two uh, straight off because all of these individuals have a severe whole body acidosis, but they don't all uh, have the same symptoms. Uh, and at least in this sampling, there seems to be no linkage between any two of the uh, phenotypes. So um, being a, a kidney lab primarily where I'm working, uh, we've already looked at these mutations from the point of view of the molecular pathology underlying the renal tubular acidosis. So what I'm going to do now is revisit that data in light of the eye phenotypes and see what we can learn from that. So um, first off, we looked at the ability of these mutants to traffic in polarized epithelia. And we used kidney cells, and we used the uh, kidney variant, uh, MBC1A. And here we see uh, the wild-type protein localizing nicely to the basolateral aspect of uh, polarized cells, where it should be. And then we look at the mutants. We find that uh, one of the mutants traffics perfectly normally, uh, whereas two of the mutants are accumulated in intracellular compartments and don't make it out to the plasma membrane. And uh, co-localization I'm not showing today suggests that this is mostly endoplasmic reticulum. And a caveat to this study is that we don't know specifically how the MBC1B variant would traffic in ocular epithelia. And there is some evidence uh, from other cell types that not all mutants traffic the same way in all, uh, all different cell types. And we'll revisit that in a second. Uh, our functional assay is uh, we would take a frog oocyte, that is an unfertilized egg. These are quite large, so we can uh, micro-inject RNA encoding wild type or mutant MBC into them. And then um, these cells are quite easily fooled, so we can, uh, they don't retain protein that's misfolded in other cells. They will quite happily traffic it out to their plasma membrane, so even mutants that are withheld in kidney cells, we can assay out of the plasma membrane here and, dictate, and determine whether or not, if they had have made it out to the plasma membrane, they would have been active or not. Uh, and our assay, uh, because these cells are quite large, we can impale them with all sorts of microelectrodes. I won't go into that any further, but uh, suffice to say that we have uh, measurements of MBC activity, and this is a slope conductance based on the fact that transporter carries net negative charge. Uh, so thankfully, uh, uh, oocytes injected with water don't have any MBC activity, but oocytes injected with MBC do. Uh, and then when we look at the mutants, <coughs> we find that uh, two of the mutants have quite severe intrinsic transport defects, uh, whereas the R881C, which didn't actually make it out of the plasma membrane in uh, renal cells, uh, appears to have fairly normal transport activity. So synthesizing all this information together, the phenotypes, the variant that it affects, and uh, whether these are intercellular retained in kidney or whether they have a functional defect or both, we can start to see um, and patterns emerging. So there are three interesting aspects in this study. And that is, band keratopathy and cataracts are specific to mutations that only affect the B variant, which uh, tells us that MBC1B is the uh, most physiologically important MBC1 variant in the lens and the cornea. The second interesting aspect is that band keratopathy uh, associates specifically with functional defects and not with intracellular retention. So in order for the R881C mutation not to manifest uh, a band keratopathy, it would have to be getting out of the plasma membrane in order for its uh, function to be uh, revealed. So this suggests very much that uh, our original MBC1 trafficking uh, model in kidney cells is not terribly helpful for looking at uh, corneal phenotypes which uh, rather begs a study of proper trafficking studies of MBC1B mutants in the actual eye cells that we're interested in. So those data are not necessarily transferable. And the third interesting correlate is that glaucoma is specifically uh, associated with intracellular retention of MBC1 and MBC1B uh, rather than functional defects. And we can see that T485S, which is as dead as a doornail, but uh, makes it out of the plasma membrane perfectly well, does not manifest a glaucoma, which uh, 
suggests that glaucoma is probably unrelated to loss of MVC1 function per se, and that is a bit of a red herring in, in, in case the, the original thought that MVC1 was somehow contributing to interocular pressure, that may not necessarily be the case, and uh, perhaps one might imagine that if cells are overexpressing a huge amount of misfolded broken protein, they could be apoptosing, and those apoptotic cell debris could be blocking the canals of Schlem, and that's something that could be also taken a look at. So in summary, the analysis suggests some testable hypotheses that we can uh, go and look at concerning the roles of otherwise of MBC1 in ocular health and disease, uh, and also that these ocular defects are not just caused by a loss of MBC1 function. This is probably a rather complex number of uh, uh, causes that are not going to be treated by one panacea. Uh, so, um, in conclusion, I'd like to thank my PI Walter Bohr, my collaborator Ashley, who uh, did the polarized cell work. I'd also like to thank Drs. Lass and Perlman for uh, fostering my interest in the uh, cornea. And also thanks to the uh, kidney section of the NIH for funding the work you've just seen, and to the National Eye Institute who uh, uh, just started funding a, a similar study on SLC4A11 that hopefully I'll be able to talk about next year. So thank you very much.